Here's a tutorial on finding the derivatives of exponential functions. So before you do this video, make sure you knew, know all the previous derivative rules, like uh, product rule, quotient rule, power rule, constant multiple rule. Uh, also in here, I'm also going to have some trig functions, so you should also know how to find the derivatives of trig functions as well. So let's go through, uh, I'm going to do 10 examples where I do derivatives of different exponential functions. So here we go. So let's go over the general rule first. So if we have a function, which is an exponential function, so uh, the base is some constant number, I'll just call it b for now, raised to the exponent of x. If we want to differentiate this with respect to x, so if I want to find f prime of x, the general rule is you keep the power, so you keep b to the x, but then multiply that by ln of the base of the power. So multiply that by ln b. So that's our derivative. The derivative of b to the x is equal to b to the x times ln b. So let's see how that works. Let's do a couple quick easy examples to start off with. So if our original function is y equals 3 to the power of x, if I want to differentiate that with respect to x, I keep the power 3 to the x and multiply that by ln 3. Over here, if I want to differ differentiate 4 to the x, it's just 4 to the x, 4 to the power of x, ln 4. So hopefully you see how that general rule works. But what if we want to differentiate e to the x? Remember, e is a constant number. It's an irrational number, the 2.71828 irrational number that goes on forever. Uh, if I want to differentiate this with respect to x, let's follow the same rule, and something nice happens here. So we keep the power, so we keep e to the x, and multiply it by ln of the base, so we multiply it by ln e. And what is ln e? Well, remember ln e, ln is the natural logarithm. It's really just log base e of e log base e of e. So what is log base e of e? What exponent goes on e to get e? Well, the answer is 1. So ln e is just 1. So our derivative of e to the x is itself e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So that's a nice derivative. Uh, the derivative of e to the x is itself. So the original e to the x function tells you its rate of change. It tells you its slope of its tangent uh, itself. So whenever we have an e to the x function, um, it's easy to differentiate. It's just itself. Let's do, uh, let's do some more examples where we're going to have to apply some of the other derivative rules you've learned up until now. So for example, this one will need the constant multiple rule. So our original function equals 5 multiplied by the function 2 to the x. The constant multiple rule tells us the derivative would equal just 5 times the derivative of 2 to the x. So 5 times the derivative of 2 to the x, well, what's the derivative of 2 to the x? It's 2 to the x ln 2. And you could see these factors written in any order. It could be 5 ln 2 of 2 to the x, or 2 to the x ln 2 times 5. But these, five, these three factors are what make up its derivative. How about this one here? We're going to need our uh, sum rule and also our constant multiple rule here. So I'm differentiating a sum of two functions here. So the first function, I'll use the constant multiple rule. Right? I have 3 times 5 to the x. So the derivative is 3 times the derivative of 5 to the x. And the derivative of 5 to the x would be 5 to the x ln 5. Plus, when I'm, so when I'm differentiating a sum of two functions, I just differentiate those two functions completely separately. So I differentiated that plus, now I'll differentiate that. So 2 times e to the x. Well, the constant multiple rule tell me it would be, that would be equal to uh, 2 times the derivative of e to the x. And the derivative of e to the x, we just established, is just e to the x. It's e to the x ln e, which would be e to the x times 1, which is just e to the x. So there's my derivative. And notice, uh, this is as simplified as it can get. There's nothing, no factors here I can multiply together. This is it. It's our standard form solution. Uh, common mistakes, people think that they can do 3 times 5 and get 15 to the x. Uh, you can't do that. Also, we can't multiply this argument by the constant 3 either. This is as simplified as it gets. Okay, what if I throw an example in where we're going to need chain rule? So how would that appear? So the exponent of our power is actually going to be a function that we can differentiate as well. So when that happens, chain rule tells us to differentiate the outside function 
while keeping the inside function the same. And when I'm saying inside function here, I'm meaning what's in the exponent. So we'll differentiate it uh, using the same rule as before, keeping the exponent exactly the same. So it'll become b to the power of g to the x ln b, right? That was the derivative before. But when we can actually differentiate the inside function, the exponent, like the function in the exponent, I need to do that and multiply this derivative by that derivative of the inside function. So I need to multiply this derivative by the derivative of g to the x. So I need to multiply this by g prime of x as well. So let's see how that appears. So here we go. We have y equals 3 to the power of 2x plus 1. So the derivative of that, so we'll just treat 2x plus 1 uh, as its own function. So that's like our inside function. So we differentiate the 3 to that power uh, normally. So you keep 3 to the 2x plus 1 ln 3. And now that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of that function that's in the exponent. So we need to multiply this, the derivative of the outside function, by the derivative of this, the inside function. The derivative of 2x to the 1 is just 2. So I multiply it by 2. And we could rearrange these factors, but none of these numbers can be combined here, right? Ln 3 times 2, a common mistake would be someone writing ln 6, but that's not equivalent, right? So usually you would see this coefficient of 2 move to the front. So it would be 2 times 3 to the 2x plus 1 times ln 3. So that's our derivative. About 7, let's try again. This time I'm going to need my constant multiple rule as well. So this time I have 5 times e to the power of x squared. So for this one I'm going to need a few things. So first of all the derivative is going to be equal to 5 times the derivative of e to the power of x squared. So the derivative of, of e to the x squared would be e to the x squared times ln e, which is 1. But this function in the exponent can also be differentiated. It's 2x. So there we go. There's my derivative here. And I can combine that 5 and that 2. Since they're both coefficients, I have 5 times 2. That's 10 e to the x squared times x. And there's my derivative. Three more. This one you'll need your product rule. Right? I have two functions, uh, two functions of x being multiplied together here. I've got 5 to the power of 2x times e to the power of negative x. So the derivative equals, remember product rule tells you to do the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the derivative of the second function times the first. So here's how it works. Derivative of 5 to the power of 2 to the x. So we keep 5 to the power of 2x, right? We keep that exponent in the, we keep that function in the exponent exactly as it is, times ln 5. Now we need to multiply this by the derivative of the inside function, that function in the exponent. So the derivative of 2x is 2. So that's the derivative of 5 to the power of 2x. That needs to be multiplied by the second function. So e to the negative x plus, let me just shrink this so I've got some room to do the second half of this derivative, plus, now I do derivative of the second function, so derivative of e to the negative x would be e to the negative x ln e, which is 1, so I don't have to write that, times the derivative of the function in the exponent, which derivative of negative x is negative 1. And that needs to be multiplied by the first function by 5 to the power of 2x. And then we look and see if there's anything we can simplify or common factor out here. So notice both functions have a power uh, 5 to the exponent of 2x, so I can common factor that out. And they also have a factor of e to the negative x, so I can common factor that out. So let's take out from both terms an e to the negative x and a 5 to the power of 2x. And then let's see what we have when we divide both of those terms by what we took out. <clears throat> so from the first term, if I take out both of those powers, what I'm left with is 2 ln 5, 2 ln 5. And then the second one, if I take out both of those powers, all I'm left with is this negative 1, so minus 1. So there's my derivative in factored form. Which example is that? Example 8? Okay, two more. So the last two I've made slightly more complicated. Uh, I threw a trig function into this one in the exponent, but we're going to follow the same derivative rules. So y prime would equal, so I need a product rule here, right? I have two functions of x being multiplied. I've got a 2x squared times an e to the power of cos of 2x. 
So derivative of 2x squared is 4x times the second function, e to the cos of 2x. So that's derivative of the first times second plus derivative of the second. So e to the cos of 2x, the derivative of that would be e to the cos of 2x, right? Leave it exactly the same. Multiply it by ln of the base, so ln e, which is 1, so we don't have to write that. And then I have to multiply that by the derivative of the function in the exponent. The derivative of cos of 2x would be negative sine of 2x. So negative sine of 2x. But I'll need chain rule again, right? Because the argument <coughs> of this derivative also is a function that can be differentiated. I can differentiate that 2x. The derivative of that is 2. So all of this is just the derivative of that. So this is the derivative of this. And keep in mind, that needs to be multiplied by the first function according to product rule. So it has to be multiplied by 2x squared. And then let's see what we can simplify here. So uh, notice, what do I have? I could take out, uh, both functions have a power of e to the power of cos of 2x. So I could take that out from both terms. And here's a 2 times 2, that's 4. This one has a 4, so I could also take out a 4. And this one has 2x's being multiplied together. That one has 1x, so I could also take out an x. So I could take out a 4. Oh, I'll go back to yellow. I could take out a 4x e to the cos of 2x from both of my terms. And I'll divide both the terms by what I took out and see what's left. Well, notice the first term, I took everything exactly out. So when I divide that by itself, I get 1. The next one, I took out that power, I took out the 4, and one of those x's. So what I'm left with is this sine of 2x and one of the x's. So x sine of 2x. And there's my derivative. You could expand back in to make sure it equals the line above. Let's do one last example. Another product rule example. So two functions of x being multiplied. So derivative of the first function, derivative of half x is a half. Multiply that by the second function. Plus derivative of the second function. So the derivative of 2 to the power of 3x plus 1 would be 2 to the power of 3x plus 1 ln 2 multiplied that by the derivative of that function in the exponent. The derivative of 3x plus 1 is 3. So this whole thing is the derivative of that. And that, according to product rule, needs to be multiplied by the first function, uh, a half of x. And then we'll simplify this. We'll see what we could common factor out. Um, notice both terms have a half. Right? There's a half here, a half there. And they both have this power of 2, exactly the same. So I could common factor out that half times 2 to the 3x plus 1. Divide both the terms by what we took out. We'll get 1 plus, so I took out the power of 2. I took out that uh, half. I'm left with x, uh, 3x ln 2. 3x ln 2. OK, so there's some derivatives of exponential functions. Um, Make sure you go to jensenmath.ca, get the accompanying worksheets, make sure you subscribe. Uh, and the next video will be on implicit differentiation, so stay tuned for that one.